folks, it's Adrian, the Hunting Gear Guy, and this is the WSMCR. It's uh, a 180 style rifle that uh, Wolverine Supplies is doing along with Spectre Limited uh, to uh, as the manufacturer, and uh, it's pretty interesting. This is a non-restricted semi-automatic rifle here in Canada. You can tell it's Canada because the magazines have little rivets in them to keep them to five rounds so that you can't do anything crazy with them. And... Uh, other than that, that's pretty neat. So this is uh, one of the better rifles for action shooting, three gun, that kind of thing, uh, which is primarily what I'm interested in it for because uh, I do three gun and three gun's fun. So um, why don't we take a closer look at this thing? Uh, you can see that I just pulled the mag out and I can see that the chamber is empty. So uh, let's get into this thing. Now the WSMCR is very similar to the WK-180C. Uh, Wolverine Supplies uh, was in on designing and building that originally with Kodiak, whereas this one's made with Spectre, still Wolverine. Uh, but they have uh, chosen to change a few things on this rifle. One, I don't know if you can see that, but these side inserts here are steel, uh, and there is an insert in here that's being held on by these screws as well. So we've got steel on both sides. Uh, with the original uh, 180, those sides were just the aluminum. And some users had reported that it was starting to chowder away uh, either the charging handle, which I don't know if you can see in there. It's starting to wear just a little bit there where that key kind of rides in um, or their charging handles having issues and that kind of thing. Uh, so when they did this one, they chose to go with steel sides. And this is primarily why I got uh, this one. Uh, my WK, nothing wrong with it really. Um, I haven't had any uh, uh, major malfunctions. Now I have changed a couple of things. I did change the trigger, the extractor spring, a couple of other things in there. Um, and, but I've, I've run it at three gun matches. I've got footage, footage of me running it in three gun matches. And it's been fine. I just, I'm not sure it's going to last like thousands and thousands of rounds. That's why I went with, or that's why I ordered one of these with these steel sides, because I am going to put quite a few thousand rounds, uh, through it. And I want it to last. I want it to, to be able to run it for three gun and not worry about it uh, breaking or anything like that. So, uh, that's why. I, uh, I picked up this guy. There's a couple of differences between this and the uh, WK. I'm just going to go over some of the specs uh, that I measured out just <laughs> just now and, and some of the ones from my original WK 180C review. One, uh, the barrel is thicker on this one. So you can see here that it doesn't really, uh, there's no step down uh, in the middle there. There is a, a couple of steps in the back here, but um, it generally has about a, a 0.7 inch uh, OD on the barrel. Uh, and that compares to a 0.65 inch uh, OD on the uh, WK, where you can see that there is a, a pretty drastic step up to uh, to get it to uh, match up with the muzzle there. Uh, so uh, a heavier barrel on this guy. Uh, that's one of the reasons why it is heavier. Uh, this guy is 7.94 pounds versus uh, the WK. When I measured it, it was seven pounds even. Uh, so this is, is uh, heavier. Now, uh, between half a pound to a pound is probably going to be in that barrel. And then as you can see, this forend is quite a bit longer as well. This is a full 15-inch forend uh, versus on the WK, it has a 10 to 11, depending if you measure at the top or the bottom kind of a thing. So uh, this is a shorter handguard. I didn't mind that. Like, I don't find it too uh, distracting or anything like that. One thing I did find uh, shooting three gun is that my thumb covers uh, this port right here, and that's where the gas is coming out, and I end up with a black thumb if I, uh, if I shoot this with as far forward of a grip uh, as I can. Uh, I don't think that's going to be as much of an issue with the uh, uh, MCR because it's got a much longer handguard and I can hold my hand way out there uh, if I need to. So that should keep it from <laughs> out of the line of fire of, uh, of really close gas coming out of that uh, gas port there. Now, some of the other differences, uh, it comes with a uh, different stock on it. Uh, it's got a cross pin here. So you can see that they, we've got our standard uh, end plate that, uh, that we can push in to rotate this thing up. We've also got a pin at the back here. And what that does is there's no twist at all in between the upper and lower, which I don't really care. Like some of my ARs have some play between the upper and lower. It does not matter. It doesn't affect accuracy or anything like that, but you, there is like a little bit of rattle in there. Again, I don't think this matters, but if you are picky and you want no rattle between your upper and lower, uh, rear pin is kind of handy for that kind of thing. Uh, it does kind of stick out from the side there. So that's like a little bit ugly, but, uh, uh, function over form. This rifle is very much function over form <laughs> for that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got a charging handle. It goes on either saw side. Uh, I prefer it on the left-hand side because as you see on the three gun videos, you 
load a mag, and then you hit that charging handle on your way back, and uh, it's a very quick motion to uh, uh, charge this rifle up. Hit. Hit. And one other thing it has that uh, the WK doesn't have from the factory is a shell deflector. It's got just this little 3D printed guy here screwed into this uh, steel side plate there. Um, I don't know if they, they probably have more of these that they could send you if you really broke one. If you broke one, I don't think you will because uh, it's not really like a high pressure kind of a thing. It's just hitting like an empty brass uh, uh, shells that's coming out and just kicking it out to the side. And I kind of like that it's there because that doesn't get in the way of the other stuff that... Uh, uh, that this guy does. So the advantage with this one is that it does cover up the slot. The disadvantage is that if I wanted to change over the charging handle very quickly, I'd have to pull that guy off and I wouldn't be able to, uh, to run it on the right hand side. Whereas this one will run it on both sides. Now, again, some people complain about, uh, open sides, uh, of, uh, of rifles. And again, yeah, if I was going to go shoot in a desert or survive in, in like the, the highlands or something like that, I probably wouldn't want open sides like this because then dirt and debris can get into the trigger and that kind of thing. I shoot for three gun and I go hunting coyotes sometimes. So this is fine. This is fine for me. I don't care. Now, in terms of internal components, some of these are better and some of them are much worse than the WKs. Uh, the trigger is much better. The trigger like on the, on the original WK was uh, like just above 10 pounds, just uh, unusable, unusable, uh, flat out. Even if you worked it over, did the paracord tr trick to try to work the trigger in it, just... Uh, swap in another trigger and I'm fine with that. I have other, uh, triggers that I can, uh, stick into my, uh, uh, my rifles since now my ARs are all banned. So, uh, I got triggers. I got, I got other stuff I can put onto these rifles. I don't care too much. Uh, this one was seven pounds, uh, from the factory. I think with a little bit of working in, it could get a little bit better, but I'm never going to find out because I'm going to swap in a trigger tech uh, unit uh, toot suite. In fact, I'm doing this video so that I can put my better stuff in this thing. Um, and I, cause I just rather shoot uh, with my better stuff that I have around. Now, one thing that I'd say is worse, the ambi safety on this thing is really, really stiff. I'm gonna have to see what's happening on the inside because something's not right here. It's just way, way too swift, stiff. It's not something I could do like on a timer very easily. Uh, this is going to slow me down like a half a second to a second, just trying to do that on the clock. So I'm either going to wear that in or I'm going to take it apart. And uh, that's, uh, that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it apart and see why it's doing that. Uh, other differences, I mean, not a lot that's super important. This top rail is put on a little bit differently. Some of the edges on this thing are a little bit more edgy. So on the WK, some of these are a little bit softened. Some of these have a little angle on them, a, a, more of an angle. This is just basically softening off this, uh, this square edge. Whereas on the WK, they're a little bit more angled. And I think it does look a little bit better. You can see there that that angle there is, is quite a bit bigger. I think it looks better on the WK, um, but again, I don't really care. I am a, a function over form kind of a guy, so I don't really care about that stuff. Uh, the mag release when it came was just a little bit too inset, so I just backed it out one turn uh, just so that it would uh, work with uh, just being flush rather than having to push in with my fingertips. So uh, that was fairly easy to change. Um, yeah, and other than that, I think I'm going to see what's going on with this safety change this trigger out and uh, crack into this thing. So let's crack right into it. I'm gonna knock these pins out off camera just because it's too hard for me to do on camera. Uh, but you can listen to me talk while I do it. I'm just gonna use this uh, Allen key here and I'm just gonna give them a, a sharp crack. It's normal for um, new AR style rifles to have uh, stiff pins on them. It's normally something that you would have to work over and uh, eventually they'll start getting loose on you. And there we go. So we've got those apart. Normally I'd leave that front one uh, on there. I'd remove the rear one, push this guy in, and then they'd just leave her open. But since I wanted to take them both apart, there, there we are. Uh, here's that rear end plate. This is a much thicker plate on the, on the rear end here compared with the WK. And it moves in there a lot nicer. On, the w, on my WK, it was a little bit stiff and it would catch stuff. This is not catching anything and it's, it's fitting really nicely in there. Uh, there's our dual guide rod and spring. And we pull the bolt back. I'm going to pull the charging handle out. And there's our bolt. And uh, 
it's a little bit different, but not in ways that matter. So, oh, one thing I did notice, that retaining pin is a roll pin. I don't know if I like that. I might replace that with a proper pin because I don't think that that should be a roll pin there. Firing pin is spring loaded, just like it is on the WK and lots of other firearms out there. And, uh, works as you would expect to. And one thing that is different, I don't know if you can see in there, but the uh, piston is uh, uh, the rod that goes back to, to hit your bolt here. It, it's brass sleeved up here rather than, I think the original was nylon. So maybe that's an improvement. Brass is a better, better material than nylon for sure. Um, so maybe that's better. I don't know. And up into the trigger guts, this is all pretty standard, exactly the same. So um, yeah, no real change there. I'm going to take this trigger out and put a new one in and I'll see you in a minute. Now, one thing I noticed with some of the mags is that, uh, this guy isn't quite long enough and it has actually, you saw that there, you see it just slipped down there. Now that's, that means that bolt hold open isn't going to work with this magazine. I'm going to have to stroke it back to, uh, to get it to work and it might prevent the magazine from dropping free as well. Uh, so that part looks like it could be a little bit longer. That should be made a little bit longer. All right, I'm back. So I had the rifle out uh, apart and took a look around and took it to uh, Ladies' Day so that the ladies could uh, uh, shoot some rounds out of this thing and so that they could, you know, wear it in, get the get the uh, sharp edges off by, uh, by running a bunch of rounds through it. And uh, you'll notice a couple things that are different uh, on it. Uh, one's the stock. Now, the... Uh, the stock that it comes with, this Magpul knockoff thing, it failed. The little like detent in there that gets on the buffer tube uh, broke, which I kind of was expecting. Now I got a bunch of different stocks, so um, I was probably going to replace this anyways. But uh, if you don't have a bunch of stocks, well, that's something to think about. I replaced it with this Magpul MOE fixed. Uh, this is a fixed stock, so it doesn't move back and forth. I kind of like these for three gun because there's less to think about. I don't need to like adjust the stock or anything like that. I just run it at this length all the time and, uh, it's easy. Uh, another thing that, uh, that happened was the castle nut started to loosen. That's because the castle nut is not staked from the, uh, from the factory. So, I had to retighten it and stake it. And that's what that is right there is, uh, you take a center punch, you schwack it on the, uh, uh, on the end plate there. And it fits into a groove that's built into the, uh, uh, castle nut. So that locks the castle nut up and keeps it from coming off. And the last thing that happened, uh, and this actually happened afterwards when I was uh, trying to sight in, cause again, I want to use this thing for three gun, uh, is the, uh, you remember that pin that I talked about? I oh, one thing I did notice that retaining pin is a roll pin. I don't know if I like that. I might replace that with a proper pin because I don't think that that should be a roll pin there. I didn't know if I liked that, that roll pin. It failed. And <laughs> the firing pin and spring shut out the back of the bolt and uh, wouldn't fire after that uh, because the firing pin wasn't in the bolt anymore. So I had to fix that. Um, luckily, just standard AR uh, firing pin retaining pins fit into the bolt carrier. So again, if you have an AR handy, you I, I would just recommend replacing it. A roll pin is a poor choice. They're hollow in the middle, repeated abuse, and they, they'll bend in and they'll let the firing pin shoot out the back and then the, you're out of a firing pin. So um, just change that out. I don't really know why they put that in there to begin with. I think that um, maybe it's because it's hard to get air parts in Canada right now. Like maybe that's why, but like a, a regular split pin or a solid pin or something like that's got to be better than a hollow roll pin inside that bolt. So if you get one of these things, change that out immediately, change the stock out, uh, stake the uh, castle nut, tighten and stake, uh, tighten and uh, stake that thing. If you don't have like an AR wrench that you can use to tighten the uh, castle nut, just use a brass punch and just whack the edges of it until you can tighten it on properly and then get your center punch and give her a good whack on the, uh, uh, on the end plate there to mash that metal into the castle nut and you won't have to worry about it coming off. Now, the other thing that um, I noticed before is that I don't think the safety hole is drilled in the right spot in relation to the uh, trigger pin and hammer pins on here. And the reason why, again, this uh, firearm is empty right now. 
Uh, if I put it on safe, it won't fire right now. If I put it on fire, it'll fire. And if I want to, I can put it on safe. You shouldn't be able to do that. And the reason why I can put it on safe is this safety is a little bit too high. So I tried running it with uh, my fancier trigger, but this one has very little movement and I could put it on safe and still pull the trigger and that trigger would fire. So this safety is not in the right spot. Now, if you saw my footage beforehand, you saw that that safety was kind of stiff. And the reason why it was stiff is that if you tighten that bolt up too much, you pinch these together and it's real, real draggy putting it back and forth. Whereas now you can see it's nice and clicky. Uh, what I did is take that bolt off, apply a little bit of temporary thread locker to it, and then only tighten it on to kind of like a little snug, not very snug at all. And the re and now you can see it's moving back and forth. That screw's not going to come loose because it's got that thread locker on there, but it's not quite so tightened that it's like squishing it onto the receiver. That's a lot of cons. Uh, what's good about this rifle? Well, uh, after a few hundred rounds, as in like 300 rounds, uh, I checked the inside of this, no real wear on the side panels. So steel on steel, that's good. A little bit of oil and uh, and you're fine. So bolt cam pin, all that stuff looked good. I think this is going to be a long lasting firearm. Uh, I did like the uh, heavy barrel, the forend didn't come loose on me or anything like that. So everything forward here uh, was fine. In terms of the back, I'm left with a couple of things that um, are a little bit of a disadvantage or you might have to do other things. So one is the trigger. Um, if the other ones are like mine, you can't use a drop-in trigger. You can't use cassette style. You're gonna have to use a component like a, a Geisley, or this is a Rock River Arms National Match two stage. I think I bought it like a million years ago. Uh, it works great, um, and that kind of thing. And then the safety does, as you can see here, work uh, with that trigger. But with the cassette ones, it uh, wouldn't. With a lot, some of the cassette ones, like if you've got a, a low back uh, uh, cassette, it's going to be fine. If you've got a straight or a flat one, like some of the trigger techs, you're also going to have to grind away the bottom of your bolt release because it's going to be a little bit tight to the top of that trigger pack. So uh, that's another thing to to uh, take into consideration. Um, trying to think of other things. Uh, you will want to replace the trigger if you're going to use this in a match, just because seven pounds is a little bit heavy uh, for a three gun and that kind of thing. You will want to replace the stock. You will want to stake that guy in there. After all of that, uh, it fed fine. It would. It was uh, more or less reliable. I did hear uh, from one of the guys that was uh, uh, running this station that had this rifle that there was a couple of uh, uh, times where it would double feed. Um, who knows what that is though? I mean, it could have been someone had their hand up here and brushed against a char charging handle. It didn't quite eject that round or it didn't quite get the other one in and they stroked it and they, they double fed it. There's uh, there's a couple of different reasons why that would uh, uh, happen. Um, I'm going to need to get a couple more rounds into this thing before I can say whether or not it is uh, uh, up to snuff in terms of reliability for a three gun and that kind of thing. Um, just because my next match is the, the big two day event and I don't want to, I don't want to have my rifle go down on me for that kind of thing. Um, Mm, so, like, a, a couple of things are really nice on this rifle. Again, steel side panels are really nice. I do like that the barrel's a little bit heavier. I do like the 15-inch forend. All that stuff's really good. Um, the cross pin at the back, if you, again, if you don't like that flex on the up and uh, upper and lower, this doesn't have any. Um, a lot of the other, like, minor parts, I don't actually care about the stock. I kind of wish they had just included, like, one of those crappy mil-spec stocks that, uh, that everyone includes with a rifle, and then people just throw away, because... Some new users, some people who don't have a bunch of these stocks sitting in their closet, might have to use that. And I think it would be a, be a better choice for them to use a crappy mil spec stock than a, some knockoff AliExpress stock that uh, that's going to fail on you and uh, stop working. Um, I think the trigger, again, if you were a new user, the trigger's probably okay, like seven pounds. It's it's fine. Chuck an optic on there and and away you go, kind of a thing. Um, and I don't think, I don't think there's any other mods that you have to have to do. In terms of three gun, I'll probably change out this to uh, to a break. I just have that on there for now, but uh, I'll probably put a break on there just to uh, just to get those double taps <laughs> going with this thing. Um, I probably won't change a grip just as I don't really care. Like I have nicer nicer grips, but uh, I don't think there's anything really wrong with the A2. Some people don't like that uh, that nub there. 
Uh, I don't, I don't really care. I think it's fine. Uh, mag release, all that kind of stuff was fine on this thing. So no changes there. Now, one of the other mods that you probably want to do if you're going to use this thing for competition is get a bolt catch or bolt catch lever. Uh, RWE makes these Range Warrior accessories down, I think they're in Calgary. Uh, and uh, the whole idea here is if you get a double feed, uh, the way to fix that is you need to lock the bolt to the rear, rip your magazine out, and then deal with whatever's going on. You can't do that <laughs> if you don't have a bolt catch. Your magazine's going to be stuck in there, and you're going to be stuck trying to, I don't know, fish around in the ejection port or something like that. So uh, definitely get a, a look at getting one of those bolt catches. I don't actually use that to release the bolt. I uh, I pop my mag in, hit the, hit the charging handle, and put my hand forward. I find that faster and a little bit better with like gross motor skills. But in terms of the WSMCR versus the WK180C, there's not really a clear winner here. They each have their pros and cons. I think that um, for high volume three gun shooting, this guy is the better deal, but you need to have AR parts that you can swap into it to replace some of the parts that uh, uh, aren't good. Uh, and for the WK, uh, it's more ready to go out of the box. You do need to tr to get the trigger out of there and put a nicer trigger in. Uh, but then you can turn around and use that for coyotes and, and, and that kind of thing very, very easily. Uh, so I think they have their, their different pros and cons. Uh, definitely check out the article I've got on this, uh, on this rifle because there's a lot of detail I put in there uh, about some of the things that, uh, that I found and I think you might uh, find it interesting. Um, but I'm going to get a, a going to get some more rounds in this thing. I'm going to use it at a, uh, a big three gun match and I'll report back here on how it went. Thanks for watching.